Well, lucky you, you have found the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. We call it Weather for Weather Geeks, and this is the edition for Thursday evening, the 23rd day of February 2023, and it was one for the record books today. We didn't break a record, but we tied a record. We couldn't squeeze out one more degree today, but uh, we did hit 69 degrees at the airport this afternoon. That ties the previous record high on today's date, also 69 in 2017. By the way, the warmest February temperature for any date occurred in 2017. On tomorrow's date, on the 24th, it got to 75 degrees. But on the day before, it reached 69, and that's the temperature we got to today. And just about every number on this map, in the orange and yellow zone anyway, was a record. It was quite a bit cooler, of course, up towards Detroit and Erie and into New York. But where the warm front passed through, records were set in so many places. Akron, New Philly, Wheeling, Pittsburgh, Youngstown, and down towards Columbus as well. These temperatures are much more typical of the second half of May, not the second half of February. It was kind of interesting this morning. You know, I got up and in some parts of our area... I saw temperatures in the mid-50s, but in other places it was in the 30s. The warm front was just sort of straddling our viewing area at the start of the day. At the airport, we actually dipped into the mid-30s at the start of the day, but then the warm front lifted north and everyone in our viewing area got in on the warm air this afternoon. So we went from 47 at 11 a.m. to 65 at 1 p.m., just over that kind of lunchtime period at the Youngstown Warren Airport, and similar jumps were seen throughout the region. We've had three weeks of this now. We had 68 on a Thursday two weeks ago, 69 degrees on a Wednesday last week, and then today, Thursday, 69 degrees. Not counting today's numbers. We'll do the math tomorrow, but not counting today's numbers. Uh, we're sitting at 8.8 .8 degrees above the average for the month of February. We'll take a look at uh, some overall February and wintertime statistics towards the end of this video. Now, as of this recording at 7:11, cooler air is starting to filter in from the north and west. We've dropped to 53 now in northwestern Portage County. Newton falls down to 61, but we're still well up into the 60s, even close to 70, the closer you are to the Ohio River. But everyone's going to turn a lot colder for tonight. It's not hard to find our cold front on the weather map this evening. Uh, it is, of course, basically along I-71 or just west of I-71. So the you know few hours it takes to drive from Indianapolis to Columbus, what a change that is. You go from winter to spring, but uh, Columbus, you're... Hours are numbered in this kind of air. Uh, with the uh, colder air already into Dayton, you know it's coming fast into central Ohio. Let's take a brief de detour out west where a big storm system is impacting California and parts of the Intermountain West. And today, the National Weather Service office in San Diego had to issue a blizzard warning for some of their mountainous areas. I told you last evening the Weather Service office in Los Angeles had to issue a blizzard warning for their higher terrain to the north and to the uh, east of the city. We still have blizzard warnings out for a lot of the mountainous areas of Southern California. And then off to the north, I mean, in some low-lying elevations here, we have some winter storm warnings out. This includes places around the Napa Valley and even down into some lower elevations around the San Francisco Bay Area. It's not unheard of, but it's uh, it's uncommon to see snowflakes uh, in and around San Francisco. But it's going to be possible over the next several hours, including some of the hillier terrain around Sausalito, and, uh, you know, if, if you've ever been to the West Coast, you know it's really, really hilly around San Francisco and in some of those higher elevations. Could there be some snowflakes? You bet. Back here at home, no snowflakes for the next several hours. But uh, because of the rain that occurred yesterday, especially in our northern viewing area, it got kind of heavy. Uh, no surprise, the Weather Service had to issue a flood warning today for Eagle Creek, Trumbull County. This is uh, near Braceville barely above flood stage and it's not going to stay there for very long we've probably already reached our crest and we'll see uh, eagle creek descend down below nine and a half feet probably under eight feet by tomorrow morning all right so big story tomorrow is of course the big change we were wearing shorts this afternoon a lot of us tomorrow winter jackets are needed we'll be in the 20s at the start of the day we'll be lucky to hit freezing in most of the area not a super windy day but enough of a breeze to create a wind chill that will be mostly in the upper teens and lower 20s. Might see a flurry at the start of the day, but I think the afternoon will be fairly sunny, and then clouds return for a brief time tomorrow night and then clear out for Saturday. Saturday afternoon looks pretty bright, and Sunday afternoon also looking fairly bright. It'll be chilly in the mornings this weekend, but the afternoon's progressively warmer. 42 Saturday and 50 degrees on our Sunday. All right, we've only got a few days left in meteorological winter, the months of December, January, February. And most of these numbers are pretty much final at this point. I don't think the math works out that we'll have to change this graphic for the, the February statistics. Certainly the snow statistic is pretty much set in stone at this point. But here's some of the impressive stats for the winter season. We're going to go uh, 
into third place in the uh, on the list of warmest winter seasons, meteorological winter anyway, on record. The second warmest February seems like a lock. The second least snowy February is a lock. We've had 0.2 inches of snow. Uh, the record to beat is only a trace back in 1998 during a super El Nino. Um, it's much more typical to have a winter like this in a strong El Nino than it is a weak to moderate La Nina, which we've been in this year. And also the warmest, fifth warmest January on record. Hard to believe, you know, we've been talking so much about how extraordinary February has been. You know, January wasn't that long ago, and it was also very warm. In fact, the fifth warmest on record. We'll look at a lot of these stats. We'll, we'll, we'll dive into some of the meteorology, why the um, winter shaped up the way it did. And we'll look ahead to the spring and even a little bit into the summer season next week on Weather for Weather Geeks. And I'll put a blog post online as well on my blog, ericwfmj.com. We'll kind of do a recap of the winter and look forward to the growing season. No Weather Geeks on Friday. I will see you back here on Monday. Thanks for tuning in this evening and all week long. Have a great rest of your Thursday night.